Okay, so I have. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's mute whatever that mic is. All right, very good. So I've um, built up with the refined painting layer. We've customized this brush. It's defined now as a brush we can use. It's right there. So it goes to our default settings for the shape dynamics, for the tip, for the scatter, for everything. And so what we want is a predictable tool. Then I'm using it at a lower opacity. I'm only at 41% here. I'm going to bulk that up a little bit to around 60. And looking at my reference, I'm stealing colors by holding down Option. And I can steal colors from everywhere, but I've also set a few aside as a palette you know, for instance, when I do the teeth, I know that this is the white I want to use, right? And I can still adjust the size of the brush, the opacity as much as I want, but I'm just blocking these in. And because it's at the lower opacity, it means that to really overstate it, you know, to get that bright white in the teeth, I need to go over it more than once, just like I would have to Whoops, with a regular traditional paintbrush. I'm trying to copy uh, the color palette from one layer onto a new layer and paste it. Um, okay. I selected it with the lasso tool, but now how do I copy and paste it onto a new layer? Okay, so if I wanted to do that, like if I want to move it from the refined paint layer onto, my, onto just a, a fresh layer, maybe that's all on its own. Yeah, I lasso around it. And then I'm going to say edit, cut. You can do copy and paste, but then you would have to delete it as well from your other layer. So if I say cut, it will delete it and keep it on the clipboard. And then I can make a new layer and then say edit, paste. And then it will put it there so it's on its own layer. And that way I can see a little bit more clearly, you know, what my refined painting is doing. Thanks. And then I can lock it as well so I don't accidentally paint on my palette layer. And I can even label it. There's not a clear prescription for the ordering of your layers and how many and things like there is for digital coloring, right? You can just keep building up more and more refined paint layers as you go. But I do recommend you lock layers that you're not painting on so you always know exactly what layer you're, you're adding paint to. So with this video, I'm going to stay zoomed out you know, trying to look at the whole thing. And that's to keep me from getting too um, distracted by the details in any one area alone. But when we start next class with a new video, I hope to be at the point where I can start zooming in and finishing off some aspects of it, right? So with this refined paint layer, I'm just getting some of those sharp edges back. I'm picking my colors a little bit more deliberately, finding my light sources and my shadows. Because it's at a slightly lower opacity, you know, it's not 100% opacity, it means when I paint over things, nothing is really lost. It's layering and giving me texture and visual interest very different than the flat color that you started digital painting with or i'm sorry digital coloring with 
So this is more than duotone. This is what we would call full spectrum. But we don't have lines that we're working behind. But what I do recommend would be the same uh, recommendation if we were in a traditional painting class is that pretty early on you want to start establish your darkest dark you know how dark are you going to go with this painting and where and establish your highlights so that you know the value range you're working between and i contend that that shouldn't be pure black and pure white you know, I got my lights and my darks from my reference images. And that's going to bring kind of a more harmony to everything than if I just use the darkest pixels and the lightest pixels available to me. And it's still kind of like finger painting, but just by kind of restating and working around your shapes and changing your colors, it's going to build up more and more of the personality of your own painting. And you're not trying to get yours to look like mine. You're trying to find your own level of finish your own workflow that you can get excited about and that can take some time it does in my experience it really does speed things up to have a tablet so that you can work with that pressure sensitivity. But, um, you know, this isn't bad. And having Photoshop like on your computer or even just using like freeware like GIMP or some other Photoshop emulator downloaded to your computer, your brush will move a little bit faster than it does in this browser based environment. Because there is just kind of a little bit of a slowdown that I'm getting used to but hopefully you're seeing it's all possible. And this is the point in the digital painting where you just keep on working on it and it doesn't seem like you're making a lot of difference but then if you turn off your refined paint layer, you'll see that you're really doing quite a bit. It just takes time. So be patient with yourselves as you're learning this. We're not going for a perfect finished result to turn in next class. We will have long enough to kind of come to a level of finish on some aspect of it that helps you understand how you how you approach digital painting on your own. That's the goal. And then if you'll have enough experience with it that you'll know if you want to use it as part of your process for your final project or not. I will put these videos up in YouTube as soon as I can after class. But I don't really have any great wisdom about this process now, except to just put in the time. As you put stuff down and then layer over it and then restate, play with some different colors. You can even throw in a wild card color every once in a while. give you something to react to, and then mix in and around. And 
And whenever you think there's a color you think you can make more use of, you can paint that and add that to your palette. Which I have now locked on a different layer. And when you're trying to figure out kind of how to stylize your your own digital painting, think about the audience you want for it. You know, are you trying to flatter the the animal, like make it look like a really cute cat or a really cute bird, for the audience you expect to appreciate this work? Or if you're doing a portrait of a celebrity, are you being sympathetic to that celebrity, or do you want to poke fun at them? For Godzilla here, I'm trying to be kind of reverent to the goofiness of this Godzilla mask design. Have fun with it, but also kind of take it seriously. Try to do it justice. Okay, so we will be um, all done. If you have to get to your next class, it's 1240. I'm just gonna finish up this video. It's just three minutes left of it. And then I will stick around in the meeting for any questions, seeing how I can help. And still at this phase, I'm feeling like my brush is a little bit bigger than I want it to be most times, but that's good. If you're heading out now, guys, I will see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Give it a little hint of the upper teeth. And then remember to save your work and label it so you can find it next time. Wait, could I get your opinion on like my process so far? Yep, I'm just I have about 30 seconds left in this video and then I'll be able to do that. So I get it to a good place so I can start it next time. Some more refinement. <laughs> 